Hey everyone, this is my Fisher Video Tech Mark 20. In the daylight, I have a uh, a pair of the Fisher uh, STV 690s. They go with the RA 690-1 cabinet. Uh, Fisher made a bunch of these uh, these cabinets. This is the higher end one. Um, where it includes a 27-inch TV. This is a uh, Fisher PC420 television monitor. Uh, there's no audio built into this thing. It all comes from the 890 stereo system. And it's all controlled by the Fisher CB420 that has one remote that controls everything. And that sends the on-screen display information from the 990 VCR and the 890 receiver to the TV. Come over here. So we have the 990 VCR. I actually have a couple of these. Uh, this was the highest, the high-end uh, Fisher VCR in 1986. This VCR alone retailed for about $1,000. This whole setup was about six grand, I believe, at the time. We have the CA890 amplifier, 150 watts per channel, RMS. We got the tuner, the 890 cassette deck, and this I added in. This is a Fisher DAC 205 five disc CD changer. And I have the original 890 CD player down here, and that's the 890 equalizer. All this was upgraded with LEDs. And my add-on for this is the surround sound processor. This is a CAV875. And that I have hooked up to my Fisher ST015s. These things sound amazing. That's an eight inch woofer. Uh, I believe it's a four inch mid-range and a three inch tweeter. So coming over to here, we have another 990 VCR that I just have for setup. This thing works. Um, I love the VU meters on there for the audio. And I have a DVD player hooked up to it, as well as a Roku with the composite outputs. I also have this universal remote. It's a Fisher RAV877. This actually controls the surround processor as well. You can see right here, AV surround. I use that when I'm not using the, the big control for everything else. What's up, Cloud? Watch out, Cloud. So, I'll turn this on. Uh, I probably won't use the remote, but you could, yeah, I'll take that out because I want to show you some features. So, we'll turn the system on. There's one button, turns the whole system on. see what input we're on here and there's the on-screen display a lot of that information is coming from the audio system and the VCR we got a little bit of flickering on the video but you do not see that in person so if I come over to the 890 and I turn the volume down you can see it show the volume on the screen that's all coming from the CB420 and the amplifier uh, somehow that interfaces all that um, the VCR if you do I think if I turn the Dolby off, we'll get information. Oh, no. Uh, uh, we got output modes. It shows you very various information on the VCR when I change stuff. And then you can see it, it does some different stuff when you select on the VCR. Yeah, it must be when I just had the screen display on. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on. And there's a button on the remote where we can go uh, the status. And we can see the status of all the equipment. So the VCR, the CD, the tuner. So if we, let's say we wanna start the tape deck, you can select uh, deck two or deck one here. And uh, if I hit rewind, you can see that it shows you the status on the screen and the tape is rewinding. And that finished it went to stop and then you can play this you know and it shows you there is a uh, ribbon control cable on these that control everything through the 890 receiver 
um, so the remote can control it. So if we go back to the screen here, we have a, uh, let me see if I can put some audio on that's muted. All right, let's go. And let me mute this so we don't have no copyright stuff. And then if I do sound graph on the remote, If I do sound graph on the remote, you can actually see the audio that's playing through the amplifier, which is pretty cool. You know, I mean, this is, <laughs> I don't know what I, I wouldn't use this for today. Um, it's a cool feature, but I just don't, I think it was just one of those things to have back then. I mean, if you were sitting here watching this on your CRT TV all the time, it just it wouldn't make any sense. You could overlay this on the picture. There's two uh, forms of uh, displaying this information. So if we look at the status there, if I hit sound graph again, you can see how the back of the screen changed. So that'll impose it over the screen. So we had that uh, back in the day. If you had a telephone uh, uh, service hooked up to this, there's a telephone directory. You could put your telephone directory in there. Actually, you can't hook up a TV to this, but you can put in your your uh, telephone numbers. Um, there's various messages. Uh, I wrote this for my girlfriend, <laughs> and you can like I get like I said that's that's got no background from the input on it, and then you can superimpose it over in an image. So there's all kinds of things in here. There is a calendar. And it is, it does work current. I think there, I looked in the book, there was, there was a cutoff year. I'm not sure what the cutoff year was. Um, but you can imagine all of this, uh, the, these features and this remote. I mean, I have a mini docks in here. This is the remote. So that kind of gives you an idea of how big that remote is. Um, this remote controls the TV, the VCR, the tuner, the CD player, the turntable and the tape deck. Um, and then you have all your control functions on the side here. Which, this thing is pretty cool. So, if we move over to the TV, this thing is very rare to find. Um, this is a model PC-420 television. We open up the cover here. You have some adjustments in here. So, typical Fisher TV from this era, they have the same levels. All of this controls goes through the PC420. Uh, all that on-screen display comes from the, the uh, not the PC420, the CB420, the controller. Uh, there is no volume adjustment on here because it, it relies on the 890 system. So there's just a channel. Uh, there are two composite inputs on it. There are no uh, stereo inputs whatsoever. That all has to go through either the CB420 or your add-on 875 surround processor or any of the various inputs in here and you could see my my led upgrade that i did to all the components um the cd player is off currently i do have the original turntable but i don't use that i use a uh a uh, audio technica and then we have the led upgrades on the uh cav 875 surround processor so if we come, now when I got this TV, the picture was, the horizontal width was in, and it kind of had a sag in the vertical. And what that turned out to be is there's a switch mode power supply in here, and it wasn't outputting enough DC voltage. It's supposed to be about 110 volts or 111 volts, one or the other. And I was only getting like 87 volts and what the switch mode power supply does is is uh, Fisher Sanyo era used a hybrid IC and that one was bad for some reason and it wasn't telling the switch mode power supply to give it more power so I ended up doing a um, uh, an electronic modification because those are obsolete and I can't find them I used uh, some um, diodes and reverse bias to allow the 110 volts to come through and then the, the, the switch mode power supply was happy, my picture came back and it works good. So that's the unit. 
Uh, let me see what else I could show you. You could select different sound sources depending on what input you're using. So that is the that is the RAV-420. This is a little dusty from sitting in the, the housing there. And then I have the service manual for the PC-420. Uh, again, this is a 27-inch monitor. And uh, I got this from stereomanuals.net. Um, I thought they were a scam at first, but it turns out they're not because they sent this over and it's a nice book and it has all the schematics that fold out. And that's how I was able to troubleshoot the switch mode power supply. So if you need one of those, check them out. No, I don't sponsor them. I just found them I'm trying to help people out. Uh, this whole setup came from 1986. It's what, almost 38 years old. Uh, the cabinet is in really good condition. And uh, there are these side cabinets that open. So you just push these in and these open up and you can store some stuff in there. I got some DVDs and remotes in there. And the same for the other side, that opens as well. And that is my, I would say that's my Videotech MK20. I had the 890 set up here in a uh, their rack that they had back in the day. So I have another one of those upstairs, but I, I, I really wanted this entertainment center. I finally found this thing and this thing is loud and um, I enjoy watching old movies on it. So uh, if you guys have any questions with any of this stuff, um, anything about how it operates, if you're curious, let me know and uh, I'll try to uh, answer your comments. Thanks. Have a good day.